your presence on this church anniversary in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you. We celebrate you on today, Lord. We honor you on today, Lord. Shift like number four in this place, oh God. In the name of Jesus, help us to go to the next level in you, Jesus. Help us to worship and adore you, Father. Yes, Help us to go higher heights and higher levels and new expansions in you, Lord. Yes, Let Lord. there be an increase in this house, oh God. Let there be a shift with, in the atmosphere on today, Lord God. Let there be kononia in the house on today, oh God. Let there be a pavement way for the message to go forth on today in the name of Jesus. It will go forth smoothly in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask that you just touch God's house of deliverance, church, Lord God. Let there be elevation in the name of Jesus. Let there be a spring forth of new things in God's house in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We honor you on today. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for... Just touching each and every person in the house on today is watching us uh, right now in the name of Jesus that you are continuing to just mold them, Lord God. Mold them for your glory, Lord God. Mold them for your purpose in their lives, Lord God. Help us to deny our flesh, Lord God, and move forward in our purposes in you, Lord God. Help us to decrease so that you may increase in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. We honor you, Lord. We ask that you just continue to just bless us with new opportunities and new people, Lord God. We ask that you bless us with new ideas, Lord God. We ask that you continue to just keep us in your bosom. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you for just removing anything that has held us back, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you may be able to just move in our lives like never before, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you that we are moving into the land of milk and honey, Lord God. We thank you for new territory, Lord God. We thank you for the increase in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And Holy Spirit, we thank you. We praise you like never before on today, oh God. And we ask that you continue to cover us with your blood. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Hello, everyone. I'm Evangelist Shree Braswell, and I'll be doing the welcoming occasion. Amen. 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 Welcome, family and friends. We have come together today to celebrate a momentous occasion. We have embarked upon 12 years in God's house. Woo! Woo! In our lead, praise the Lord. And our leader, Apostle Martina Wade Hill, has served faithfully as our senior pastor for all these years. We are so excited for the open heaven of favor over this house. The Lord has truly blessed us all so greatly. The focus of the house is love, order, and shift. Amen. And we have seen the miracles from doing so. God has blessed our obedience. Furthermore, we want to thank every one of you for all your hard work, dedication, support, and prayers. We give all honor to Jesus Christ for his word, direction, love, power, and strength. With his hand and your support, we will continue to further the work of saving souls. Amen. Thank you all for coming this afternoon and celebrating with us. Please enjoy the rest of this service. Amen. Next, we will have Speaker Pastor Marie Silvers for the scripture reading. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, God's house. Amen. 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 Let us turn our Bibles to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 22 through 24. Once again, that's Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 22 through 24. And I'm reading out the ESV version today. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And it reads, to put off your old self, which belongs to your formal manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. 
and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. 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 Let us now go to our Decalogue. Amen. Amen. Which is our Ten Commandments. And it reads, Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord God who brought you out of bondage. You should have no other gods before me. You should not make for yourself any idols. You should not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You should not commit murder. You should not commit adultery. You should not steal. You should not lie. You should not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And I am going to do an invocation prayer before our speaker goes forth. Amen. 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 Let us all prepare our hearts in prayer. Amen. Amen. Dear precious heavenly Father, Lava Siki, yes, so Tolobo Siki, yes, Salmia Satalaba Siki. Lord, we thank you, God. Lord, say yes, Satalaba Siki, Yamaya Satalaba Siki. Oh, Yamaya Satalaba Siki. Father, we bless you right now, Father. We are in expectation for a word, oh God, that will shift us, oh God. Lord, we are in expectation for a word, oh God. Lord, we command an open heaven right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare right now an apostolic shift in this house, Father. Lord, we declare, Lord God, a prophetic shift in this house. Lord, we declare a healing shift, oh God. Lord, we declare right now miracles, signs, and wonders. Father, we thank you, God, that you are the God of expectations, Father. You you are the God of heaven and earth, oh God. Lord, you created heaven and earth, oh God. Lord, so visit this house right now. Oh God, move to this place right now. Father, we have divine expectation for this appointment, oh God. But we are an expectation for miracle signs and wonders, Lord. And we thank you for doing it right now, Father. We are in agreement as a church, oh God. We are in agreement for your glory. We are in agreement for a shift, oh God. We are hungry for the Holy Ghost, God. So show us your glory, God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone agreed and said, Amen. 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 We are excited. And we welcome the mighty Apostle Martina Wade Hill. Amen. Amen. Well, all right. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is an honor, as always, to be in the house of the living God. Twelve years. In God's house. That's that's order. That's governmental order. Amen. And we thank God for the governmental order. There is a word from the Lord. Yes. Praise Him. Praise the Lord. And we are going to continue. We're going to continue with the text in Ephesians, which has been read, but we're going to read it again for that's what I'm preaching out of. Amen. Ephesians. Verses 22 through 24 And I'm reading the English Standard Version And I'm going to read it again for us It reads Put off your old self which belongs to your former manner of life And is corrupt through deceitful desires And to be renewed Say Y'all say renewed. renewed To be renewed in the spirit of your minds And to be put on To put on the new self Created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Amen. I'm going to use the theme as my subject, transforming into the new. Transforming, yes, into the new. Lord, preach and teach. Let this message sink in that we may be able to transform into the new creatures you've intended us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Transforming into the new. So, when you think about transformation, you have to understand it's this. It's reinventing ourselves. Reinventing ourselves. That process alone is extremely hard to do. If you imagine one of your worst habits and then trying to break that, that's a hard thing to do. Now imagine transforming your entire life not just a habit, but everything about you changes and you become a completely new creature. Come on, somebody. It is a very hard thing to do, but I'm going to tell you the truth. When God has set something before you, it is the most rewarding thing to do. 
Reinvention requires destroying the old identity in order to create a whole new identity. That means that there are aspects about you that people used to recognize, but they have now become something totally different that people now have to readjust their perception of you because that perception has to change with your new identity. I need somebody to be with me because you have to understand that the way that people used to look at you will have to change if they want to understand the new you. It's like if they saw you at five years old and you 25, they can't address you at five years old anymore because your intellect, who you are, your height, everything about you has now transformed. So now they have to take the time to get to know the new you. Somebody say growth. growth. And so at this point, what God is doing is growing us into the people that he has called us to be. And even though this experience of transformation can be totally difficult, it is very necessary in order to walk in the fullness of the new creature that God has made us to be. See, when you look at yourself right now and who you are, you may be proud of where you've been. You may be proud of the things that you've accomplished. But I tell you right now that you're just right now snap dab in the brink of your breakthrough because you have not quite became what God's wanted you to become. You're still in the process of your transformation because of the goals that you have put before yourself. If you have not reached them, you have not totally become transformed. You are transforming into the new. Yes. The hard part about transforming is that you're in the middle of your process where people are literally watching you change before their very eyes. They're watching you become new. You're watching yourself become new. You're watching things fall out and become new. I got a funny story about that. I remember when I started my, my weight loss journey, and so the Lord told me, I want you to cut your locks off. If y'all y'all been watching my transformation. My locks was all down here. I had room for eight years. He said, cut your locks off. I was like, Lord. If you if you part of the lock community, you know locks. Once you have your locks, that's that's some serious. It's like cutting your finger off. It's like, it's serious. So I struggled with that for a long time, for months. I said, cut your hair. It's like, no, God, these are my locks. I can't cut my hair. So one day I came home, <laughs> found one of my locks on the floor. Oh. It didn't fall off from the end, it fell off from the root. And he said, if you won't do what I told you to do, you won't be bored. Because I wanted you to do the breaking away of the process. Because if I take it from you, it's not gonna be in the way that you're gonna like it. But if you do it, you'll be able to do it in the way that you like it. See, you have to learn how to correct yourself and how to push yourself. Because if God puts you in a corner and you are in a place where you can't look, it's either sink or swim, it's not gonna be the most pleasant or the most comfortable experience. But when God is pushing you into something new, hindsight is 2020. If you spend time with him, he'll give you instructions. Yeah. And if you follow the instructions, you find that your transformation process is not as difficult as if you ran and he put you in a transformation process. Oh, yeah. It is difficult because you notice that you're sacrificing more than your thought process. You're sacrificing your circle because as your mind changes, so are the people around you. You can't have the same people around you with the old mindset because they, they, can't, they can't groom you where you are. It's like if you decide to change your diet and everybody you hung around love Burger King. Come on, somebody. You try to change your diet, you need somebody who likes salads. Come on, somebody. You have to change the circle in which you hang around to cultivate the new you. That's why it's so important that your circle is stronger than you. It's so important that your circle is more successful than you. It's so important that your success, your, your circle uh, are, are the people that you're striving to be. Because if you're the smartest person in your circle, that's about as high as you're going to go, is you. Come on, somebody. And you find yourself feeding everyone and not being fed. 
Transformation is a process. And it can be very successful if we take three steps. I just got three, y'all. Three steps to godly transformation. The first step is take off your old self. Take off your old self. We're just working in Ephesians. Ephesians 4.22 says, To put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and it is corrupt through deceitful desires. So the text is saying that your old self, the way you used to act, the way you used to live, is corrupted because the way you used to think. Say, I I need somebody to be with me because this is good. I might just shout by myself. You're corrupted by your thoughts. You're corrupted by your desires. And your desires are what orchestrates your path because that's what you hunger for. And what you hunger for is your drive. And so what you end up having to understand is that corruption is leading you down a path that's going to take you to your old self. God said you got to get rid of the old deceitful desires. That becomes very hard because you have to build a taste for the stuff that's good for you. You know, when I was a little kid, I hated Brussels sprouts, so I used to feed them to the dog. I did. I never forget it. I was, I was probably about six, and my mama put Brussels sprouts on my plate. She put three or four because she knew I hated them. And she said, just, just eat these four Brussels sprouts. So she believed, and I gave them to my dog. And I remember she came into the, the kitchen one day. She goes, why is the dog throwing up Brussels sprouts? Because as a kid, you like french fries, you like the other kind of stuff that kids like. But my mother was trying to get me to like something a little bit more sophisticated. Now Brussels sprouts is one of my favorite vegetables. I had to grow to that. Do you understand? And so if your taste buds aren't where they uh, should be, you have to grow to the next level. So what I tell people, when you are transforming out of the old man, ask God to take the taste out of your mouth from that old man. The desires that you used to enjoy. Say, Lord, take the enjoyment away. Because it's that high that you're looking for. The things you used to do, the way you used to solve problems, whether it was a chaotic uh, circumstance or not, it was the way that you used to do it. And something you're getting out of it is the reason why you're still doing it. Ask the Lord, take the taste out of my mouth so I don't desire anymore. God has to get us to a place where we are willing to change. And anything that we have desired out of an impure heart, God is calling us to to transform out of that so the old things will pass away. As we're transforming, one of the things that really has to do with the heart that must change is our character. Now, if you have been watching, we've been talking about character a lot. Because it's the character who makes the person. You ever met somebody whose clothes look good, skin look good, hair look good, everything about them super educated, but their character is trash? Yeah. Can't trust them with anything. Can't trust them with a pen. They walk off with it. Like, you can't have my good pen. It's going to disappear. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and you find that that person looks the part, but inside is nothing. You ever have some food that looked great, plated, it, and you ate it, and it tasted terrible? God says, I want what represents me to be beautiful on the inside and on the outside. He wants it to be true and true. He said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He didn't say, go look and see that the Lord is good. He said, seek ye shall find. But he said, taste, and you know that the Lord is good. Come on, somebody. Amen. And he wants our character to be good. If your heart isn't willing to change, God cannot renew it. Wow. If your heart is not willing to change, he cannot renew it because it's about the free will. If you say, God, I ain't ready to let this go. I want to keep doing what I'm doing. I want to keep thinking how I'm thinking. He's going to let you keep doing it. He said, well, let me know when you're ready. He'll be there as she see you struggle. Watch you cry. Watch you go through everything you've gone through. I don't know how many times I keep going through the same cycle. Come on, y'all. 
You have a cycle. Everybody has at least one cycle you keep going through over and over and over and over and over again because of something that we're not willing to let go. But to the point that we're willing to give that thing up is when God can renew us. Renewing our heart means renewing our desires, renewing our mindsets, renewing our thought pattern. But we have to be willing and faithfully trying to become a better version of ourselves every day. Amen. Proverbs 7 and 3. Proverbs 7 and 3 says, write these laws on your heart. Reading this scripture, reading all scripture and committing scripture to heart and putting scripture into action is the way that we can begin to correct wrong behaviors and improve who we are as people. If we hear something, like you ever heard a saying, and you said, wow, that's powerful, and then you just forget it like that, that's not committing. You've been exposed to it. Yeah. Oh, I've heard that before. Yeah. But have you committed it to heart? Put it into action. Because the only way this word is going to become powerful is if it's seated and put it into action. I tell you right now, people say guns don't kill people. People kill people. I grew up in a house full of hunters. My father was a hunter. My grandfather was a hunter. So we were, I was used to growing up with rifles in the house. And there's a lot of people have strong, you know, conceptions and and. and uh, about guns, but in my in my house, you know, my, we had hunting dogs and stuff like that growing up. And so I knew, don't touch, touch that rifle. I knew not to do this. I knew they locked stuff up. I knew, you understand? Because I knew that if somebody or I went to cut touch that gun, what's gonna happen? It's gonna go off. But my parents were very responsible. Here's my point: it can't go off unless somebody touch it. Come on, somebody. Yeah. We have to understand, unless we take the weapons of warfare, come on, the weapons of spiritual warfare to cut the flesh, yeah. unless we use scripture, it ain't going to do nothing, but your Bible on your nightstand, what's that going to do? Yeah. It looks like you got your Bible on your nightstand. A really decorated table that looked real holy, but have you read it? Come on, somebody. The Bible in your heart and put it to action. Amen? Amen. And I guess I did call the Bible a gun because I'm going to tell you right now, the Bible clearly talks about the word of the Lord is sharper than any two-edged sword. Come yeah. on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a weapon that will destroy or build up. Amen? Amen. All right. So the second one. To transform me into the new. The second step is renew your mind. Renew your mind. This is out of Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, 23 says, And to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. But if you go into the NIV, the same text says, To be made new in the attitude of your mind. So we have to be renewed in our spirit and our attitude, which is our mind. You ever thought what your mind was? It's more than your brain. Yeah. It's the spirit and your attitude. This is good. This is good. So both versions of the text, we have to grab a hold to if we want God to transform us into something new. So let's go into the mind. Okay? The mind controls the thought pattern. So we need to keep our thoughts pure and holy as much as possible so that we can make better decisions. Wicked thoughts produce wicked behavior. Wickedness is a spirit. You understand? So the spirit of your mind has not been renewed with scripture because that's the thing that cleans it. Come on. Then it's going to produce wicked behavior. What is the spirit of your mind? This is why the Bible is always talking about having righteous thinking. Because righteous thoughts produce righteous behavior. We have to filter our thoughts so our decisions will be pure. Our decisions will be wise. Our decisions will be righteous. You ever considered what is the spirit of your mind? Who? The spirit of your mind. See, the difference between spirit and attitude is this. And I can, I can explain it best in a scenario. Your attitude is not always the way you feel. 
It's the controlling factor on what you end up doing. Now, I could be in a funky mood all day, but if the spirit of the living God is in me, I'm going to make the right choice. Yeah, yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Come on. I'm going to do the right thing even if I don't feel like it. Yeah. The spirit of your mind. If the spirit of your mind is righteous versus your attitude, which is based off how you feel in your flesh, this is why the spirit of your mind is always an argument with your flesh. You ever considered exactly how is it that your flesh and your mind are so connected it's not just the, con the control center from your brain transmitting instructions but you have to understand there's more of a, of, of a cosmic connection there's more of that connection where your flesh and your spirit man kind of fall out I don't feel like getting up but your spirit man says but we need to get up we have commitments come on and they argue with each other. You probably say that's like, you, know, you see uh, these old TV shows where you have the good the angel and the devil, and they're talking. It, it's your spirit man and your flesh that argues. And you have to understand, if the Lord is dwelling deep within you, if you obtain the Holy Spirit, if you've been adopted by Christ, you have power to resist the attitude of your flesh. Come on, somebody. I need somebody to be with me on that. Filter our thoughts with repentance. Filter our thoughts with wisdom. Come on, somebody. Yeah. And as far as our attitude, we have to do our best to keep that positive. Yeah. You ever you ever talk to your attitude? Let's just be honest. You ever talk to your attitude? I, I've had these moments like, what is your problem? You I'm the only one? That's all right. <laughs> I'll be like, what is your problem? Did you eat? What is going on? Why do you have an attitude? Why are you sad? Yeah. Ain't nobody did nothing to you? Come on, somebody. Yeah. And you gotta run through the checklist of what exactly happened today and what is really getting getting on your nerves instead of me going feeling. See, if I give over to my emotion. It's going to take me to so low, dark places. The energy is going to be so dark. And it's going to take me forever to bring myself back up. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. I need to find out exactly what's causing my attitude and my flesh to be a little bit stronger than the power of God that's in me. Pinpoint it and then pluck it out. Come on, somebody. Pinpoint it and heal it. Pinpoint it and, sh and restrict it. Because if it's something you can't get delivered right away from, then you have to give boundaries to it. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. If you know there is something that's so deep-seated and it's something that you do and you've been praying and praying and it's some habit, something that you do that it cannot be easily reversed, that's going to take time and counseling and reteaching. Because sometimes we got stuff like that going on with us. Yeah. Then you have to give yourself boundaries so that you don't ruin this new creature God is trying to create. Because it has to start here. You got to have conversations with yourself. I'll be honest with you. You do. Now they don't have to be external. But you're going to have to talk to yourself. And be purposeful in what, what way are you going to look at something. I'll give you an example. I had a situation that happened this week. And I could have took it in the wrong way. Immediately my flesh was like, see, this happens all the time. I can't, I can't stand that, right? But there was that part of me that said, uh-uh-uh. I'm not going to allow myself to feel low. Yeah. Let's find the good in this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what? God is so good that if I had found out about this a week later, look how delayed I would have been. Yeah. Oh, God is so good that I found this out before I got involved. Yeah. Oh, God. God yeah. is so good that I got this information so I know what to work on. Yeah. Oh, God is so good. I feel like somebody gave me keys to the kingdom. Yeah, now I know yeah, the yeah. secrets of God is so good. This is what I'm about to do. Oh, God told me this. So I know what to pray for. Oh, God told me this. I know what to change. God told me this. God could have kept this. But he made sure that it came out. So I know the information. And so I refused to look at it from a negative standpoint. And I started using my relationship with God so that the spirit man started to control how I am to perceive. Amen. What took place in that day? And watch this. 
it got so good that I was laughing and giggling all day and my attitude was like, what is this? Why are you happy? There ain't really nothing that happened today. But I had to train my attitude to be able to look at something different. You have to train that flesh. Yeah. Because it wants to be easily satisfied. Yeah. But sometimes you have to train your flesh to wait. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And so the mind is controlled by attitude, action, spirit. And as long as we keep a holy perspective, it will affect us to have a holy disposition. So the last one. Put on new self. Put on the new self. Ephesians 4.24. And it reads, and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Amen. Putting on our new selves is a very conscious decision. But just like anything else, if you do it every day, it comes easier and easier and easier and easier. And easier. We make these decisions every day to do the right thing or the wrong thing. We make these decisions every day. I give you a prime example. You ever been so hungry that you decide I could go grab something quick or I could take my time and make a healthy choice. And I have a trick for you. If you ever have a problem making the right decision, take yourself through the process mentally of what you think the conclusion would be. And you think the end result could be drama, unhappiness, delay. Come on, anything negative, then it's not worth it. The Bible says count the cost. Right. And so you put that scripture into action, you become powerful because you did. now you decided, I counted it where it wasn't worth it. Yeah. And so you take the time to make the right decision. Putting on the new self is purpose. It's purposeful. Because the proper decisions in our life accommodate the new life. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We have to accommodate our new life. When I think of the word accommodate, that sounds bougie. Yeah. You never accommodate anything that's dirty, right? Filthy trash. Let me accommodate this bag of trash. You never heard nobody say that. When you say let me accommodate you, it's usually something with let me do over and beyond to make someone or something more comfortable. Let me accommodate you. You have to accommodate your new life so that your new life becomes comfortable. That means you have to go over and beyond what you used to do in a different way to accommodate who you want to be. Oh, come on, somebody. If you want to be that CEO, then you have to accommodate the person you want to be by maybe working a little bit harder. You're going to have to accommodate that person by changing what you're watching on television or changing what you're reading or changing your conversations or changing your professional circle. You have to accommodate the new you. Instead of looking you're like, I don't feel like doing all of that, then you don't feel like being all of that. You will accommodate what's worth it to you. I'm going to say that again to somebody. I'm going to take it all the way to the people in the back. I'm telling you right now, you will accommodate what's worth it to you. And every single day, no matter how tired you may be, it will be worth it. Because at the end of the day, you will be who you want to be. You will look how you want to look. You will talk how you want to talk. You will worship the way you want to worship. You will become the new creature that you've worked so hard to to be because you took the time to accommodate now. Amen. 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 The enemy will try to tempt you. You're going to have to understand this. Stop getting mad at the devil for everything. I learned that. It's a waste of energy and a waste of time. I'm going to stop the devil. Listen, I don't have time to even chat with him. I'm too busy accommodating the new me. Like, ha, I'm going to need y'all to be with me. Yeah. I don't have time. To argue with the devil because that takes too much of my energy that brings me low. I don't look. I don't need to stop doing what I'm doing to talk to you, 
Do you understand? Accommodate your new self and stop giving so much attention to the old self. Your old self is a testimony that happened, but your new self is what's moving forward. Come on, somebody. Putting on your new self. It's going to be hard. But I tell you right now, the e it becomes easier to operate in your new self as time goes on. The more we conduct ourselves in the newness of who we are, the more it become a part of us. The more your thinking changes, your conversation changes, what you desire changes, where, where, where you take yourself changes, uh, uh, what will you allow in your life changes. You'll notice even the people around you, they'll have the same type of air that you have. Because that it accommodates who you are. Your circle should accommodate who you are. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And lastly, transforming into the new. As it comes in stages, we have to continue to work on ourselves daily and prayerfully. Because eventually, we will be better than we were before. Amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Dear precious Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless your name for this word. We thank you, Lord, that you're transforming us even now. We thank you, Lord, that you're teaching us how to accommodate our new selves. We thank you, God, that our old self is a testimony of what you can do if we submit to the action and the power of the word of God in our lives. Lord, we give you thanks. We give you praise that each day becomes easier in your glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. If you are watching today and you do not know Christ as your Savior, I ask you right now to pray with me right now. If you want to accept him as king over your life, the Lord of lords over your life, I want you to repeat this prayer right now. I want you to say, Dear Lord Jesus, save me. I am lost without you. Come into my heart. Come into my life. I believe you died for me. And I believe you rose for me. I believe you sit at the right hand of the Father just for me. And I say with my mouth, and I believe in my heart, that Jesus Christ is Lord. And today I claim, I am saved in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. If you said that prayer with me, you are saved right now. That Jesus is in your heart and God has adopted you as his own. And we give glory for those who have been saved by this message and saved by the prayer. Because we believe that Jesus is Lord and he is the head of our lives. And we give him thanks for your soul. The angels are dancing and celebrating right now. Because you are now a part of the family. And we thank God for you. For everyone else that has come and to the word and you've been supporting our ministry, please continue to support our ministry. You're so happy to start 12 church anniversary 12 years in God's house. Amen. And we're so excited. Please make sure that you financially support our ministry. Please go to gofundme.com forward slash God's house. Click on the link and please sow a generous gift. We thank God for you on today and we bless you on today. And please stay tuned for the next part of the service. My favorite God's house memory is kind of combined into multiple things. It's really one, but I'll put it like this. I was posting online about how I wanted to learn about spiritual warfare. And uh, Elder Cherie at the time had commented on there and invited me out to the church. And I came to this Bible study that they were having at the time. It was a really in-depth spiritual warfare Bible study. And it spooked the crap out of me because I was blooping at the time. And I came and I just was really, you know, scared, even possibly the 
said he had any questions asked. And of course, he being, he being scared, did not ask any questions. I just ran from the church. So somehow I ended up coming back to the ministry, which I still don't understand how that happened. But I ended up coming back and uh, you know humbling myself and learning more and studying more. And I just find it very funny that I end up being the pastor of the church I ran from. So I just want to let you guys know that that is something that I find hilarious, uh, very humbling, and uh, just a memory that I will never forget. My favorite guys' house memories are the different outings that we would have at the church. Um, the very first one I went on was Watch Night Service 2015, and we all went to After Bees after service, and I brought on three of my sisters, and Bigfield thought my two younger sisters were Sydney's um, daughters, and Dana was there cracking jokes. We had just met her, and now her and Sydney are uh, funny and close together. And now I think about it, we're all family, so that's just nice to look back on. My favorite God's house memory was uh, in November. It was a time where it was prayer time at the end of service, and Apostle just came and, and ushered in the Spirit along with us, and we sung the song. We just kind of made up a song on the fly, and we went in. Everybody, it was it was flags. And, screaming, crying, it was just, I said, yeah, I'm really a part of the move of God. And though I've been there for a minute, I was like, I'm really supposed to be here. And um, I'm supposed to be attached to the woman of God, and to the apostle, I mean, to Maurice, everybody. I was supposed to be here, and that was the moment that i never forget. I listened to that service for weeks, <laughs> so that was one of my favorite moments. Favorite God's House memory is back in April 2018 when Pastor Maurice, um, Elder Amika, and uh, Prophetess Jalicia got anointed their ordination. Um, just me and my husband, we were just in awe on how amazing that service was. And just the oil part, I was crying. Me and my husband, both, well, we were back there crying, crying, crying. And we were just so touched in our heart. And the a funny thing is we hadn't at that point joined, but um, I'm in the car cause service was over and my husband goes back in and then I'm, I'm like, what, what is taking him so long? He came back to the car and he said, babe, this is our church. And we joined that very service. It's been a beautiful time ever since then. And I love, love, love God's house. Hi, my name is Elder Tarina. And my favorite God's house memory is when my late cousin Doriel gave her life to Christ. Hi, my name is Miracle. My favorite God house memory is when I got baptized. So my most memorable moment at God's house was actually just recently during pop-up prayer and that is when um, a few days prior Apostle had wanted everybody to do a video and um, I was like well they're not gonna notice if if I don't do the video I was kind of on a fence about it so I was going back and forth I'm like no you know what I'm just gonna let it be for the members like I just didn't want to like step out of place and pop up with a video and so during pop-up prayer apostle called me out and I felt I'm not gonna lie I was smiling and cheesing from ear to ear because I felt so loved and just so noticed which is very rare and um I really felt appreciated and uh I felt special and um, I was very grateful for that. So um, I got on it right away, but that was my most memorable moment at God's house. My favorite God's house memory is when Apostle Martina did the private ordinations during the pandemic this year. I just thought it was done in excellence. It was personable. I had so much fun helping her with it and I just felt like the message for each candidate that was in the ordain was just so touching and so heartfelt and I just truly enjoyed myself. That was my favorite God's house memory. 
Hey y'all, this is Elder Terry Bart with God's House coming on here uh, for a quick moment to talk about my most memorable experience at God's House. And I would have to say that would be the time I went to my first Ask the Prophet. I wasn't ready, y'all. I wasn't ready. I had my friends come out with me. And I remember God just like really, really spoke. Um, it was He spoke through the speakers. He spoke through Apostle. And it was just such a wonderful um, experience. I had never experienced something like that. And so um, I was just so like, man, God is so deep. And it just brought me closer to God um, during that experience. And then also, um, I, you know, I've been at God's house. I've been in many answer prophets after that because I've been a member of God's house for a minute. <laughs> so anyway, I was just coming out here to talk about my most memorable experience. My favorite God's house memories are the messages. Guard your heart. Power in your restraint. And you can win with what you have. Words that I live by. God's House of Deliverance, get delivered, stay delivered. My name is Moody Cotton. My favorite God House memories is the fellowship, the messages, the music, and the love. My favorite God's House moment is Watch Night Service from 2019 into 2020. Um, I remember after the word had come across from Pastor Mo, um, there was kind of like an altar call and the praise team began to sing. And Apostle came over and touched me again to prophesy. But then after everybody else got their prayers, she was like, hold on, you got something else, but you had to wait till after everybody else gets prayed for. And she prophesied a triple portion on me because I prayed for everybody else that I interceded and sang over everybody else. So I love that about God's house. I love that about Apostle and Pastor Maurice. They're such a great family. They're such great friends and they're so anointed. Amen. I, I love God's house. My favorite God's house memory was the month of love. It was Valentine's Day and my son gave his life to Christ that day. He uh, went up there, I think he was about three or four, went up there and he just said the speech. And at that time, he just knew that he wanted to be with God. He loved his church. He loved the apostle. He loved Pastor Maurice and everybody here. And he looked at them as family and still look at them as family. So that's my favorite memory. My favorite God house memory is Hi, my name is Dustin Starks, and my favorite memory is um, of this man who seemingly um, was drunken and he didn't submit to the Spirit of God, and the Apostle was slain in the Spirit, so she wasn't aware of the situation, but Pastor Maurice was all over it, and um, the whole church was praying, and um, I just thank God for a house that knows how to deal with such individuals. Hi, I'm Pastor Vanessa Tingle from Cincinnati, Ohio, and my favorite God's House memory is the 8th church anniversary. I'm Jaleesia Jenkins, one of the house prophets, Prophet Jaleesia Jenkins at God's House. My favorite moment at God's House was actually <laughs> when we first moved into our new building in Detroit. Apostle got the Holy Spirit and let out a shout of praise to the Lord that could be heard around the corner. She danced, she shouted, she wailed, she cried. It was awesome. Amazing. That is my favorite God House moment. Happy anniversary. My favorite God's House moment is from third Sunday, August 21st, 2016. When we moved on Puritan, our free praying bounce. I loved it. It was awesome, 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 awesome. My favorite God's house moment, and I have a lot, but I would say the pandemic ordinations, um, to do ordinations during a global crisis is still goes on. I mean, to have, and they were all women, all powerful moving, wonderful, educated women of God in all day during global crisis. To me, that's one of my favorite. I have so many. Um, even Pastor Maurice and meeting his wife, uh, Lady Dominique, and just seeing them both grow as, as people in the ministry, they are crushing on each other, 
then they couldn't talk to each other. They all sent me messages because they liked each other. And then I did their way. Every ordination, every moment, every baptism, to see people grow in the ministry, to see people get saved. All these 12 years were my favorite. Cheers to you, guys. Happy anniversary, guys. I love you. I love you. I love you. God's house. I love you, 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 God's house. My name is Noble Patton, and I love God's house of delivery. Love you guys. I love you guys, house. I really love you guys. May the Lord keep watch between me and me while we're absent one from another. God bless you guys, house. Happy 12th anniversary. Stay safe and safe.